Hello, all you hardcore boxing fans out there. How are you doing? Oh, it's Russ here from Porky's Corner, the biggest gob in sport. We say the things on here that nobody dares say. Big Joe Egan, not being in touch. Normally, we can't get you off social media, Zooms, YouTube, everything. You've gone silent. Come see me, Joe. Right. Hmm. I don't really know where to start, really. Did anybody see horse cocks a tear last night? How did the Sky Wardrobe Department clear that? He had his left hand in his pocket trying to control himself. He didn't want to let the weapon out of the bag, did he? Go on, Johnny. Pop, pop, man. Yeah, this is a good. This is a good joke. If you've had a few beers or you've been out up all night, what's Johnny Nelson and Peter Sutcliffe got in common? After the finest hours, they both had to be smuggled out of Sheffield under a blanket. That's a true story, isn't it? We all know about the Carlos de Leon fight, don't we? Johnny's finest hour. And we all know about uh, the Yorkshire Ripper's uh, finest hour. Well, when, when he became known to us all, when he got arrested. That was 10 years previous, wasn't it? We all know what happened there. Pair of them under blanket. But now look, Johnny's boss has been, isn't he? He's running around Sheffield in lycra pants. Pop, pop, bang. Unbelievable. It is what it is. Right. Had a, uh, had a good night last night, actually. I enjoyed the boxing uh, when the main event came on. But the actual... The actual show up until the main event well, I pony won it really. Absolute pony. But we got wins for Steve Clark on his debut. Mikey Tallon, he moves to 4 0. Jack Massey picked up another win. A one round blowout. But I mean, that Big Ron is not suing him no more. Us guys. Big Ron, he came on my channel. I'm suing. I hope he's got deep pockets. Blah, de, blah, de, blah. How can you see why I used to get at it with Big Ron all the time? You can see, can't you? My pet hate is people who tell me things like, they're going to do this, we're going to do that. Then they change their mind and they don't. That's a pet hate of mine. A massive pet hate. So, so Big Ron, you can now, you now understand what I'm up against, can't you? Don't worry, we're going to sue him. Why are you suing him? Well, we're six months on. I'm not hearing anything. I don't hear the same energy that I heard on my channel last year about suing. So I think it's more than six months, isn't it? It must be about a year. It's getting on for a year. Good gunners in boxing. Don't worry, wait while you see what we've got lined up in the next few months. Well, what? What have we got lined up? It's just knackers that say chatting knackers when they get in front of the camera. That's the bottom line. So win for Jack Massey, Aaron McKenna moves to 18 and 0. Mark Jeffers moves to 17 and 0. Zach Kelly moves to 15 and 2 and 1. Winning his rematch with Cullen, who has a win over Mark Efron uh, for British and Commonwealth title. But let's have it right. They were all saying Jack Cullen's the new Carl Froch, weren't they? But come on. Look at look at the stages of the careers. Look where, they, look, look where they were. Carl Frotch at that age were 22 and 0. He'd done McGee and Reed. He won British and Commonwealth. He won British outright. And he was WBC number one. Cullen's nowhere near that. So, how can the so called experts be running around saying uh, Jack Cullen, just because he beat Mark Efron, he's the new Carl Frotch? I mean, it wasn't that long ago they were saying Mark Efron were the new Robin Reed. Well, there's still time, isn't there, for that? But. 
Listen, people say things, like I said, once they get in front of a camera, and they lose their minds. People start inventing stuff. If I go up to Clinton Woods' house now for a cup of tea, you'll go, are you doing porky? They start firing a few shots into me and start messing about. I'm not going to come on here and say, yeah, I've been sparring Clinton, am I? You know, am I? People lose their minds, start inventing stuff. Like 100 and now on the hard road. And 200 kilo deadlifts with his curry. And living in the woods eating rabbit stew on Christmas Day when it's not true. You weren't in a wood on Christmas Day eating rabbit stew. Jesus. People buy into this, don't they? Vagabonds, charlatans. <laughs> Off with their heads. You know what I mean? But the actual show was pony. Absolute pony. Until the main event. The main event held it together, in my opinion, and gave it a... squeaked it a six and a half out of ten. Squeaked it, because if that main event would have been dire, well, well, they wouldn't have been rioters. They wanted enough in the building to be a riot. Well, the Liverpool's an hard sell. People used to say Liverpool is hotbed of, of boxing fans and and talent and all that. Even ESPN were going on about, yeah, Liverpool, the Smiths, and this and that. Nobody mentioned Paul Hodgkinson, did they? Uh, they mentioned the Smiths and Tony Bellew, the man that's not beat a champion. And we know the, all the Smiths CV, don't we? Pop, pop, bang on that one. Do you know what I mean? Nobody mentioned John Conte, Tim Bradley. John Conte, Paul Hodgkinson, eh? Come on. It is what it is, isn't it? But we get to main event. We've got Tasha Jonas. She's now 15 to a 1 with 9 KOs. IBF welterweight champion. She's a two-weight champion as well. Her best wins, in my opinion, Patricia Berger before yesterday. And that's a, a, probably her best win now, that one last night. So she's getting better with age. And she's 40 in June. So does that mean that Tony Bellew is going to come out and say, she's getting better with age, it shouldn't be happening, like he did against Viterbia? No, 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 he's not going to say that about Tasha because they're from the same club. Rotunda Boxing Amateur Club. So, but is she getting better? No, I think she's getting smarter. I think she's getting smarter. She doesn't waste the punches. What did I think to the fight? Well... She fought with Kayla Mayer, age 33, so she's six years younger, an inch taller at five foot nine. She was 19 and one last night. She's now 19 and two. The trainer's 80 year old, Alfred, Alfred Mitchell. A case could be made for Michaela Mayer winning that fight last night and the Boom Gardner fight. Well, this is how I look at it. Could it have gone either way? There were a couple of rounds hard to score. You could make a good case for Michaela Mayer winning. Natasha Jonas got the nod, didn't she? Hometown decision, maybe that's a bit harsh. She got the nod. She didn't get the nod against Terry Harper, and you ride your luck, don't you? Would I like to see it again? Yeah, I would. If Tasha lost the rematch, they'd have a trilogy. Do you know why? Because the pool is small. The pool is small. But I can make a case for Natasha Jonas winning it. Three of them rounds are hard to score. The pool is small. We've got 102 females in the world fighting at welterweight. In the world, we've got 2,204 males. So it's 22 times bigger, the pool, for the men. So how they're looking to do things now is they're just rematching, rematching and rematching against these good girls now because TV companies now don't want to see these dinner ladies like what Terry Harper's been bashing up for years. They don't want to see school dinner ladies on primetime TV. We want to see the top people. Now, Natasha Jonas is now box rec number one at welterweight. She's just beat the number six pound for pound fighter in the world. So she must be number six now because she was number nine before yesterday. So Natasha Jonas just keeps marching on. But are we going to see the same energy from them scousers saying that Natasha Jonas... Is getting better with age and it just doesn't happen. You know, like Paul Smith, because he's saying, Well, I didn't get better with age and I ain't got them testosterone like testosterone levels. 
Paul, you couldn't even do a morning run. You've never had any testosterone in your body in your life. Only time you'll get a bit of testosterone is when it's uh, uh, all you can eat for a fiver in a cafe. It is what it is. You know what I mean? So... But uh, Michaela May, where does she go now? Well, she's already got begging bucket out, hasn't she? Got rematch, and yeah, they'd have to do a rematch with that one, this guy. We're a great fight, and it's a fight of the year candidate for male and females. It was that good a fight, it was edgy your seat stuff, you know, a southpaw against an orthodox. So, you know, but like I've said earlier. You could make a case for Mayer winning that fight and the Boom Gardner one easily, but you're not going to get a decision against Boom Gardner on an Eddie Hills show, are you? Not if it's his fighter. So that's just how I look at it. So, but uh, I thought the show, other than that fight, were pretty dire. Uh, well, this is how I look at it, and I don't want to be harsh. I don't want to. I don't want to have a dig. Uh, uh, I don't want to have a I don't want to have a dig at Ben at Ben Shallum, right? I don't want to have a dig. It's getting warm in it. Let's turn this heat. I I don't want to have a dig at Ben Shallum, but how many shows had he done as as boxer? Were it three shows or four? And Carl Greaves from down here in Newark had to uh, hold his hand, didn't it, on a couple of them shows? Now, how can you go from that? To a Sky exclusive. You, you can't, can you? Not when we've got people like Mick Hennessy, Dennis Hobson, Barry McGuigan, Steve Wood, Steve Goodwin, all them sort of people, Phil Jeffries up north, all these boxing promoters. Joe Gallagher's got promoter's license, Pat Barrett. Why couldn't they just share all them Sky dates out? Why couldn't they do that? Because surely to God, they're not going to renew Ben Shalom's Sky deal after this. They can't do. I don't know if it's a matchmaking problem, Kevin Campion or Al Siesta. I, I just don't know. I don't, do, are, are people blocking them behind scenes? Is it hard to make fights? Because that was garbage. I mean, Cullen against Chelly. After We're supposed to be the dominant force, aren't we, in super middleweights? And we have been ever since the division were invented 40 years ago. What Morris Sutherland, the Scottish guy, the first world champion that we ever had from the UK. So going back 40 years of super middleweight dominance, we've always had great super middleweights. Would you put Cullen or Chelly in a in in a, in, a, in with somebody like Cal Zaggy or Frotch or Richie Woodall or even Glenn Catley? Would you put him in with Glenn Catley? You won't, would you? Is that is that the level now of the super middleweights? Well, what's going on here? What is going on? Billy Joe won a middleweight title, didn't he? But super middleweight title, but really a middleweight in a stroke, light middle or super welter. It's only laziness that why he fought at that weight, but the level was shocking. I bet Billy Joe were looking at that last night and I bet he thought, God, is that the level we're at now? It was dire. Dire and the actual show was pony. Absolute pony, apart from the main event. Obviously, they're bringing kids on and that, but where's the star quality from that show from males? This is Sky Sports. It's supposed to be the flagship. So I'm going to ask this question. Does Adrian Mole at Sky Sports, a.k.a. Ben Shalom from Boxer, does he know what he's doing? In Johnny Wish, how's is supposed to be holding his hand through all this? If they've got people having to hold the promoter's hand to guide them, why are they getting these dates? Why is Ben Shalom, Adrian Mole, got a Sky exclusive? Why? Why? Did anybody see that? Hey? Anybody see? Absolute garbage. Absolute garbage. That's just how I look at it. But yeah, I see Mayer and Jonas again. Look, the Taylor fight's always going to be there. They've got history from the Olympics. The Terry Harper fight. Maybe that might not always be there because there's a bit of bad feeling, but you never know how the landscape's going to change. But Natasha Jonas got the nod. She didn't get the nod against Terry Harper when she clearly won that fight. That one last night could have gone either way. But it is what it is, isn't it? She lives to fight another day. 
and onwards and upwards. Two weight world champion, box trek number one, and she's surely now number six pound for pound. It will pushing forward. She might have a couple of fights left in her. So let's see how it goes. All right. So thanks for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment. I think I'm now going to turn the alarm over for an hour. Let's fancy a knock this morning. Egg on toast, a nice cup of tea with honey, and I'm going to have a knock. I think I might have uh, the kids from San Francisco on later, or Kent, or Max. I think Max is chomping at the bit. Max, when are you fighting again? Hey, you paid all that money out for your medical and your license, and Big Ron signed you off on it. When are you fighting again, Max? Let me just tell you this. I don't think you'll fight this year on a Big Ron show. Unless he wants to farm you out. But if you're going to fight on a Big Ron show, Max, I've told you what you've got to do. You've got to put that in the pot. Three for the opponent, one to fly him over his team, and one for Big Ron. So you've got to find five to fight. So you might need to join Smigger Smig's Boxing Union thing so he can fight your corner. <laughs> All right, the biggest load of waffle I've ever seen in my life, and they're even talking about it on talks, but oh my god. Jim Royal's gonna start advising fighters. Pop pop bang on that one. Go on. Peace out.